How is it that they're able to predict a flu season and also able to predict the second wave of COVID to come through? Because the American diet and typically in other Western societies, the diet is just the same. We eat a lot of carbohydrates. We eat a lot of sweets. We eat a lot of those things that deplete our immune system. We're typically going to get sick during those months. Greetings, I'm Dr. Bobby Price, your plant-based pharmacist and nutritionist, also author of Education Over Medication. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how the cold weather affects your immune system, how certain medications and foods can actually kill the good bacteria in your gut, which is responsible for 60 to 80% of your immunity, and then we'll talk about some solutions on how you can stay healthier during the winter months. I'm going to be addressing a question that came from, you know, uh, one of my subscribers. And the question was, Dr. Price, how is it that even back in the spring, they were predicting a second wave of the coronavirus? Also, why is it that we tend to get sicker during the fall and winter of every year? And so the first thing I wanna address is the seasons, okay? Seasons are the cyclic pattern that we have uh, because of how the world shifts around in orbit and how it shifts around the orbit around the sun and how the placement of the sun on a particular part of the earth, okay? And that's what typically changes the seasons. The less of the sun we get, the more it's gonna be colder, the more it's gonna be fall, winter type of months, okay? Now, how is it that they were able to predict there's gonna be a second wave coming, um, you know, at the end of the year? Well, it kind of goes back to what I just mentioned before the seasons. So typically we have uh, four seasons. You know, we have um, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Okay, typically we have four seasons, but in the modern era, era we have five seasons because now we have the flu season. Okay, so every year between October and let's say February, we typically have what's called the flu season in healthcare. And those are the months uh, that we're typically giving out shots in healthcare, okay? Uh, when I worked in the hospital, those were the months that we'd be pumping the whole get your flu shot season, okay? And that's typically between October and February of the following year, okay? And again, that also corresponds to fall and winter. So we're transitioning from the summertime going into fall, then winter. So we're getting colder. Now, what's important to understand about that transition a lot of different things are happening, okay? As you transition from the summer, you're getting less sun, okay? As you can see, like typically, we tend to shift our clocks back when we go into the fall and, win and winter months, okay? That's why they say we typically fall back with time as we move forward, okay? And the reason why they do that is because of Poor Witcher's Albanet, which was created by Benjamin Franklin, okay? And the his whole reasoning behind that was, you know, as we trend towards December, we get less and less sunlight because of how the world is orbiting at that time, okay? And because of how the world is orbiting and because we're getting less sunlight, it gets darker quicker, okay? So typically during the summer uh, on the East Coast, let's say you're in the South, um, it will get dark at eight o'clock at night in like, july and august you know so eight o'clock at night it will still be a little bit of light outside okay but as you tend to trend towards september october and november november it tends to get darker around about six o'clock and that's because of how again how the world is moving in its orbit around the sun we're getting less and less sun as we go towards those months okay now because we're getting less and less sun we're getting less and less exposure to the sun on our skin, which means that we're getting less and less of vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very critical uh, vitamin, but actually it is a hormone that plays a huge role in our immune system, okay? So typically during the summer months and at the hospital when I worked there, we would see less and less patients during the summer because people are feeling better. They're outside more. They're exercising outside more, which means they're getting fresh air, they're getting movement in their body, they're getting exposure to the sun, so more vitamin D. During those months, people tend to like foods that are cool, so people are, 
more likely to have salads. People are more likely to have fresh fruits. All of these reasons contribute to why people are typically healthier during the summer months. Now, as we, tri we trend towards the fall and winter months, it starts to get cooler and cooler outside. And as a result, mentally, we start to look for foods that are more warming and we stop consuming the foods that are cooling foods like fruits, vegetables, uh, raw foods, uh, cold beverages, things of that nature. Okay, so we're trending away from the healthier things uh, like fruits that have a lot of antioxidants and other things in them that are very important for our immune system. Okay, also as we trend towards the fall months, tradition takes place. Okay, and the traditions go in the form of October, we have Halloween. So during the Halloween months, what are we typically eating? A lot of candy. So we're eating a lot of sugar. Sugar will kill your immune system, uh, especially the type of sugar that is in the typical foods, especially things like candy that we're eating in Western society, okay? After Halloween passes, we go directly into November, and November is what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, we eat all these rich foods like uh, mac and cheese, which is essentially a load of carbs and dairy. Uh, so you're getting mucus and a lot of sugar in your body. Uh, you're eating stuffing, you're eating a lot of meat, you're eating a lot of pies, cakes, cookies, you, you name it. All of these things contribute to a lot of sugar in our bodies. And you don't just eat one plate, you're eating multiple plates. You're eating so much that it makes you go to sleep. Like it makes your body just shut down, make you go to sleep so it can say, let me get rid of all this food you put in me. So we go, we trend out of that month and we're keeping leftovers for the next two weeks until December. And then when we get into December, we have our holiday parties that we're gonna go to. So you go into holiday parties at work and friend's house for another two weeks, and then you get to Christmas and then boom, you're having another party with the family where you're eating the same rich foods typically that you would eat during Thanksgiving. You fall out of Thanksgiving, you trend forward, you go to the new year, and guess what you're doing then? You're drinking a lot of alcohol. Alcohol has a lot of acetic acid in it, which is essentially just like sugar in the body. All of these things will deplete your immune system. They not only deplete your immune system, but they kill the good bacteria in your gut, which is responsible for manufacturing 80% of your immune system. So now let's sort of tie it back to the original question. Why is it that typically during the fall and winter months, we get the sickest? Okay, and also how is it that they're able to predict, you know, a flu season and also able to predict the second wave of COVID to come through? Well, because the American diet and typically in other Western societies, the diet is just the same. We eat a lot of carbohydrates. We eat a lot of sweets. We eat a lot of those things that deplete our immune system. We're typically going to get sick during those months. And when you add into, you add the fact that it's colder, and the cold weather actually innervates our body to the point where it actually uh, stresses our body. And stress will also deplete your immune system as well, okay? Now, if you compound that with the fact that most people have a lot of inflammation in their body, so what are they taking? Anti-inflammatories, okay, like ibuprofen and other drugs like that. These things will also kill your good bacteria in your gut. Okay, a lot of people have things like autoimmune conditions, so they're taking uh, immune suppressors, okay, to suppress their immune system. And typically, when you take an immune suppressor, if you go to the pharmacy and when you're checking out and they do a consultation on you, they should be telling you that, hey, this could cause your immune system to be suppressed, and as a result, it will increase your risk for infection, okay. That's really important to understand. A lot of people are taking things like steroids. So let's say you're an asthmatic and you're taking that inhaler, that's a steroid, okay? Let's say you have a lot of inflammation in your body and your doc doctor decides to use a steroid, you're taking steroid. Again, these are things that suppress the immune system, okay? These are all the things that compound the fat, you know, and make you sicker, make you exposed to getting infection in your body, okay? So as we, tend to trend towards cold weather, which makes us get more sicker because the cold weather itself 
will make us uh, more predisposition to being stressed because it's a stress on our body. And what I mean by being a stress on our bodies is our body actually has to compensate for the cold weather in an attempt to make it warmer, okay? So you will get goosebumps on your skin. That's an attempt to make the body warmer, okay? Blood will rush to the surface of the skin instead of being circulated around the organs like it should be. You understand? Like you still have blood there, but a lot of the blood is being shunted away uh, to actually cool the body. You understand? So that's a, a very innervating activity that's occurring as a result of being exposed to cold weather. All of these things are the things that cause your body to be predisposed to getting more infection. Okay. So this is why typically every year between the months of like I said before, October and February, they consider it the flu season. They want you to get that flu shot, okay? And that's why they're calling for you to get that flu shot. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the flu is prevalent during that time. That has nothing to do with it. What it has to do with it, do with is the fact that during those months is where you're you have the an increased factor of being exposed to infection because your body's innervated, you're eating, eating things that cause your immune system to be suppressed and depleted. You're also taking medication and OTC medications that suppress your immune system. The winter months themselves are actually causing your immune system to be suppressed. Uh, and then you complicate that with the fact of New Year's where people are drinking more, not only during New Year's, but during the holiday season in and of itself. So you can see how tradition also contributes to that season. OK, and this is why they also say that, hey, there's a, there's probably going to be a second wave during this flu season between October and February. Now, what you can do is go on the CDC's website. OK, go on the website and you can look at the statistics for last year. And what you'll see is between October of last year and February of this year, so October of 2019 and February of 2020, they estimated that between 30 and 60,000 people died of the flu. I'm not talking about Corona. I'm saying between 30 and 60,000 people between October and February died of the flu. Okay. Now, you have to also consider that that number may be grossly underestimated because we don't do the kind of testing with the flu that we do with Corona. Like if we did the kind of testing with the flu that we did with Corona, those numbers will probably be grossly inflated. You understand? So the take home advice that I want to give you guys that is really important to understand, especially as we're transitioning now from fall into winter is that you have to be very careful about carrying on traditions during this time because eating all of those foods, all that meat, dairy, uh, processed carbohydrates in the form of pies, cooks, uh, cookies, cakes, uh, pastas, breads, cereals, and the list goes on. All of these things will turn into sugar in the, in the body and that sugar will turn into acid in the body which will cause the body to be innervated or the, the energy of the body to be depleted, which will also deplete your, your immune system. And that's the really important take home point. So as you're transitioning into the holidays, make sure you're making healthier choices. Okay, that's gonna be the most important thing. And if people are out there wondering like, hey, um, so should I be, is it okay to have fruits as a replacement for my sugar? Absolutely, because the difference between the type of sugars that you're going to find in refined carbohydrates, cookies, cakes, pies, pastas, breads, pizzas, things of that nature, there's a huge difference between that type of sugar and the sugar that you will find in something that is natural, okay? The sugar that you will find in fruits is the type of sugar that our bodies will recognize, digest, absorb and utilize okay it's not the kind of sugar that will just sit suspended in the blood and in addition the type of sugar that you will find in fruits also comes with fiber okay and fiber buffers the effect of sugar that comes comes with uh fruit because they go hand in hand in nature wherever you find sugar you're going to find fiber one, locked in together okay because that's nature's balance for sugar Okay, you're not going to find that in processed carbohydrates, 
because processed carbohydrates pull the fiber out of the food. Okay. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment below. Let me know what you're going to be doing different for the holidays to make sure you keep your immune system up. And also let me know what other content you want me to also speak about in the future. So until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed. If you're looking to reclaim your health going into the new year, make sure you go to my website, drbobbyprice.com to learn more about a full body detox and how I can not only help you prevent disease, but also reclaim your health. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button below. That way you can learn more about holistic approaches to healing.